Today on Den of Plastic, we talk about leveling up your paint skills through accepting challenges. What's up denizens? I'm Jason the Hobby Viking and you're watching Den of Plastic. Now, the painter's journey is often a difficult one and I know in myself that I've put my paints away for years on end simply because I wasn't able to break through that next level of skill and, and keep progressing in a way that I was happy. Uh, and this has been a hot topic for many people out there. I know others struggle with it. How do I push through that next level? Um, well, for me, one way that I've found works is to accept challenges. And it's not about winning this challenge or, or you know, placing in the top three or whatever. It, it, for me, it's about coming up with uh, new ideas and working in new ways that I might not normally do it. And in doing so, I find uh, new skills or new ways to approach things. And I end up finding that I can increase my skill level through doing that. And this was the case in uh, one such challenge just recently. So on Instagram, uh, Lass Hammer and her partner, Harry Painter, put out a challenge to the general public with a prize pool of their own to take an Age of Sigmar model and they'll roll the dice for you and give you a different Grand Alliance under which you would paint them. Now, I had a Chaos Knight floating around the house and um, the Grand Alliance that I was rolled was Order. Uh, now, I could have taken the easy route and uh, painted it as a Stormcast Eternal, just blue and gold. But instead, I wanted to push myself and I chose uh, the Sylvaneth. Now, in my head, I came up with a story that would help choose the direction my painting would go. And the story was that this, there was this mystical forest where it had magical powers and was um, inhabited by the Sylvaneth, the tree people. And a chaos knight was lured by these, these magical powers and he wandered upon the, the forest and started patrolling its borders, trying to find a way in. And in doing so, he has unknowingly started to be possessed by this, this magical power and is taken over by the Sylvaneth and is starting to sprout tree branches from his armor and shield and stuff. Um, and so that, with that story, I set about uh, modeling and painting a character that I wouldn't normally do. And... Um, so I found myself leveling up in this process and uh, that's what today's video is all about. Painting this miniature, choosing different routes to, to branch out in and, and painting things in a, in a way that I wouldn't normally do it. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the video and um, yeah, I hope you learn something along the way and you're able to, to level up in your painting skills. Now I'll leave a link to uh, Lass Hammer and Harry Painter in the description so you can check out their, their profiles. There are a couple of great people on Instagram with uh, a great presence and uh, a lovely character. So uh, check those out, watch the video, and I'll see you at the end. So I started off by sculpting some branches and twigs and stuff coming out of the Chaos Knight. Um, just used green stuff for that. And I started with a deep green, spraying all over one side of the model of Chaos Knight. No! Using the airbrush with this is pretty quick. You can get the same sort of effect by just painting it on, but yeah, you're gonna get much quicker results out of the airbrush. I've thinned this down fairly, fairly thinly. So it just sprays on quite lightly and you're still getting some of that black shining through. I want a little bit of that coming over onto the other side of the model. 
just so it's not so one-sided. Here you can see I've added a little bit of white and uh, blue to the mix. Just bringing it towards that ethereal uh, magic look of the Sylvaneth. Hitting mostly the, the highest parts on, it, on the model. Still having a bit of that top down sort of highlight coming onto the model. Really starting to punch towards those light colours. This is just a, a mix of uh, lemon yellow and phthalo blue and then just adding white and a little bit of blue as we go through progressively highlighting even further see here another lighter stage just adding more white a little bit of blue with adding more wine is it becomes more saturated uh, desaturated uh, and you, you find that you lose a lot of color out of that so here I went a bit too far and I wanted to bring some of those mid tones back so I've come in with a sap green ink from Holocroft just bring that mid tone in inks are really nice like that they'll punch uh, a nice desat uh, a nice saturation onto the the model while still showing the shading underneath you can see I'm wiping a bit back just with a bit of water um, over the top of the model and that's just to, to bring a higher focus to the face and the head now the silver nether tree pickle so I wanted the, the the grounding parts like the, the legs and the roots um, to be to be brown you'll see here soon I, I come in with darker colors along the bottom that's using the old bestial brown from uh, Citadel paints um, that's going back quite a few years now I've, I've been painting on and off for, for 20 odd years so you still got a few of those old old paint pots lying around. They don't make them like that anymore. You can see I'm painting a bit more into the a bit more brown into the legs just to deepen the the color there. Gradually bringing that brown up into to more of the model. See there, all the twigs uh, have been painted brown and stuff as well. Here I'm just adding a bit more magenta into the mix. Um, I, I wanted a bit of a tonal and temperature variation. Uh, and that's going to play really nicely against the green in the model. Painting that mostly on the lower parts of the model, down and around the legs. You see as it goes along there, it's, it's separating that brown.
onto the chaos side of the model and I'll just come in with uh, just a standard cadmium red for all the armor plates. Applying that fairly thinly so that uh, it dries darker than it is. That way you'll still get some of that black shining through and um, the color will turn out a lot sort of deeper. It won't be as bright as it dries. I have thinned it a little too much, but, so I'll have to come back with a second coat. That's what I pretty much do through throughout all the red parts in the model. Just coming through now, hitting all the, the armor plates with that red. As I go closer to the, the magic line of the green, I start sort of fading it out, letting it stay a bit, a bit more black. That'll um, allow for more contrast in between the colors. Using a little bit of water to thin it out further as it approaches that, that greener side. That red acts as a nice contrast against the green, it really stands out. Here I create the line between between the green and the and the red. So as the magic is slowly taking over the Chaos Knight, you can see this magic line starting to to take over the body uh, as it creeps across. I got this idea from a lot of the uh, Alpha Legion uh, decloaking miniatures that are getting around on the, the internet at the moment. Creating a line of magic all the way around, and there we have it, skipping forward, just creating arcs of lightning and, and sort of magic as it as it creeps across. Not worrying too much about this. I'm going to be coming over it in a second with uh, green ink, Dane Tree by Holocroft, and that's just going to be. Punching that saturation level of the, the line right up, really bright green, and uh, yeah, just giving it that magical look. Not worrying too much here about being precise, just letting a little bit of that green flow over onto the the rest of the mini, um, that'll give it that glow sort of effect. And with that all done, you can see it, it's really bright and punchy. To add to the effect of this is arcing sort of lightning or magic, where there are areas of large concentration, like in the, in the joins of arcing magic, 
you, you can see I, I come in with a bit of white or really bright green just to highlight the area and make it sort of jump out a bit. It gives that effect of, of some really hot, hot pulsating magic. See there, it hasn't quite taken over that shoulder pad. Still a little bit of the Chaos Knight left on there. And once that's done, I come in with some dark gray, just working on the horse's uh, texture. This is a black horse, but I use like, blacks through to, to light grays just to highlight the skin, as if it's got a really nice coat on it, nice and shiny. Bringing in the lighter grey now, as we work towards the highlight. And that's fairly thin paint, so it'll it'll dull down as it dries. Again, even lighter working in that highlight as if it, the light is coming from top down. You can see there the process I, I use. Uh, I usually get a great gradation, so like I'll start at a dark grey, work up to a light grey where my highlights are going to end, and I'll just work backwards and forwards between that that dark and the the light, just um, just moulding the colour as as I see fit. When you work that way, it, you don't have to worry too much about um, I guess transitions. It's a lot easier to work. Uh, from one area to another without creating too much of a, a line between the colors because you're, you're working just in between the whole area. see here I just pick and pick and match just as I go along just a little bit further along the, the scale for each new highlight if I need to I'll just drop back a bit and, and uh, fill in any transitions here you can see I'm adding just a light blue glaze to the top sides of the of the highlights that's just to give the uh, the uh, impression that the, the horse fur is really, really sl uh, silky and, and reflecting the, the colors of the sky. And then I'll come down along the bottom edges and add a bit of brown. Kind of a bit of a, a technique you might see in like a Frank Frazetta painting or something. Just adding a bit of color into the, the shine rather than just leaving it a, a plain dull sort of black to gray uh, transition.
for the glazing I just use a, a bit of glaze medium and really thin the paint down. Now here I, I'm really bad at non-metallic metal. Basically I've, I've barely done anything non-metallic except for the occasional blade here or there. Uh, and I really wanted to push myself for this, this challenge. So in not knowing really how to do it, I went and looked at a few tutorials and stuff on the internet and came across Emil from Squidmar Miniatures, his non-metallic metal paint process. And I really liked it, I thought it was simple enough and so I set about my version of doing some non-metallic metal on the horse plates. I don't have the, the certain colours that Emil used and I certainly wasn't about to go out and spend $24 on the three bottles of paint so that I could make it so I just set about mixing it my, myself. You know, having that, that colour knowledge of being able to mix, mix colours and, and making it to what you want uh, really helps with, <laughs> with money for starters and uh, just bringing about the colours that you, you need. So yeah, if you guys want me to make a, a mixing um, video, let me know in the comments. Um, I, I probably will get around to this at some point. But um, yeah, help save on, on you know buying so many paints, and that money can go towards more minis. Uh, so the color I'm mixing here is Mornfang Brown. I just bring that up on my iPad. The screen's a bit dark here; you can't really tell the the true color that's coming through there. But I'll just mix it up. I'll paint it onto a piece of paper and just test it up against the screen to see if I've correctly mixed the, the paint. The next one that I mix up is Scrofulous Brown. This is a, a lighter brown, basically just a, a little bit of yellow and um, a little bit of that brown that we mixed using magenta, phthalo blue and the cadmium yellow. So you can see just adding a little bit of the brown we mixed earlier into that yellow just brings it almost straight up to the, the color we need. Paint that on. And test it against the screen. Yeah, it's a bit hard to see but that, that color pretty much matches right up. The third colour we need is uh, I think it was, uh, Sun Yellow from Vallejo that he uses. Um, and this is just a sort of a, a desaturated yellow with a bit of, a bit of green in it. So all you do is um, yeah, grab that cadmium yellow, uh, a touch of thalo blue. Be careful with thalo blue if you ever use it. It's a really toxic colour. Uh, and it, it will stain stain your paint so quickly um, and if you're not careful you'll, you'll push it beyond a point where you can bring it back so if you ever use Thalo Blue just use a tiny bit at a time. Here I was feeling it was a bit too green so I bring more yellow into just, a, just the edge of it. Test it up against the screen and it's not, it's not desaturated enough so I just bring in a bit of brown to dull that back. Push it a bit closer to the colour we need. Testing it out, it's, it's dull enough, but it's not quite uh, green enough. So pretty much mix that all in. Testing it out again. And I think that was good enough. Bring back more in, more green into that into that mix just to get it right. And there you have it. That 
it's it's sun yellow from Vallejo. So now onto the metal plates. Um, following Squidmire's tutorial, uh, just painting that scrofula, scrofula's brown onto the, the panel first, just to lay down the mid tones. And you'll see I do this through all the panels on the on the chaos side of the horse. Go. Now coming back in, a little bit of white mixed into that scrofulous brown and just going on the edges where I think um, the, the shine might be. I'm Like I said, I, I'm really not that good at uh, non-metallic metal and that, that's why I wanted to push myself and, and just try and level up my, my game there. This panel turns out quite nice, but um, some of the some of the other panels not that great, as you'll see when I've completed it all. Still looks really nice though once it's completed. Just getting a nice transition there, I'm juggling a bit bit between scrofulous brown and the white white and scrofulous brown mix that I had earlier. Adding a little bit more white coming into the tips. There go. Even lighter still, adding a little bit more white into it just to get that contrast. Now here I come in back with some Mournfang brown just to darken the, the middle sections up and give it a higher contrast. Yeah, that's, I think that's still scrofulous brown. Adding a little bit of the, the Mournfang brown in with the scrofulous just to, to darken it down. Like I said earlier, adding white to your mix will really desaturate your colors. And so here, uh, we come back over with that uh, sun yellow just as a glaze, really thin down paint, almost dirty water, just wiping over the top of it. And you'll see that, that richness of the yellow start to come back into it. Then with the white and scrop scrofulous mix, we come back in and line the edges of the panel. Brightening the tips and creating an edge highlight with that light metal colour. There we are, adding some more white to the mix, just to brighten the tips. Get a really nice punchy look. There we go. So there we have it, I've gone all the way around the, the model now. You can see the, the golden parts on the armor there. My attempt at non-metallic metal. It's not great, I mean, it's not perfect, but I don't mind it, it's pretty nice. Here I pretty much replicate the sort of the same sort of effect 
um, doing a non-metallic effect on the blade of the, the spear just in um, a, a silver kind of uh, mix just going uh, grey to white Pretty much using the same mix I used on the shadow, uh, sorry, the highlights of the the horse legs. Just that same uh, dark grey to to light grey mix. Same sort of gradient. Again, making the, the edges punchy with that lighter colour, giving good contrast. Added a little bit of a blue glaze to the, the middle of the blade there. That's just to, to change change the colours up a little bit and make it a little bit more visually appealing. Coming around with an edge highlight now. Using white to, to really outline that. These are things I might not normally do uh, if it was just a piece that I was painting for myself like I might have just pulled out a silver and, and be done with it but for um, you know since this was a, a challenge I, I thought you know I, I'd challenge myself and, and this is how you get better this is this is you know, the way you improve by by pushing yourself and and really you know doing things that might be uncomfortable but you will learn in the process and, and take your, your painting to that next level. Okay, now that that's, that spear has all been done, I come in with a bit of edge highlighting on the, the red parts of the armor, just um, bringing in an orange just to make that a bit more punchy. See that really pops against the red. Moving on to the skull of the horse there now. Uh, just another color I mixed up, just sort of a, a reddish brown. Uh, it turned out looking a bit like the uh, Citadel color uh, Bugman's Glow. So you can see it's got that pinkiness to it. And I just wanted this as the, the undertone for, for the bone color of the, the skull. Coming in with a cream now just to highlight the skull. This really stands out against that, that uh, deeper color of the, the skull there, the, the pinky brown. leaving the recesses dark. Again, 
two thin coats. Just making sure that that paint is, is reasonably thin. I'm working over it a couple of times just to bring it to full opacity. Working in the teeth there. Again, needs a couple of times going over. Bringing in a little bit of white, I think, into the mix there, just to highlight that. Flipping it over now, working on the green side, the Sylvaneth uh, area of the model. Bringing a bit more contrast into some of those lines you can see there now. I've skipped ahead, um, outlined some of the, the highlights on the horse, uh, brightened up that star on the, the shield just to make it pop out a bit more. Here I am coming through and uh, just highlighting the, the browner parts now, making them pop a little bit more. Adding a bit more white, a little bit of cream into the, the mix and um, yeah, Adding more highlights as we go, making the branches pop a little more. Coming in with that one last highlight, just making some difference to the, the branches. I've really enjoyed painting this model, it's um, been one of the more fun models I've painted in, in recent times. And a little more yellow glaze to it, just to change that colour difference. There you have it, pretty much the, the model is complete. I come in now with a few different shades of green and blue, and a touch of magenta here and there on the, on the base of the model. You're not gonna see a lot of this in the end, so it doesn't really matter the color you go for. I just wanted a bit of a coloring. Coming in with some PVA glue, laying a few lines down, and I'll place flock on here in a minute. Just sort of wanted a few interesting lines in and around the base. Spreading it out a little bit with uh, an old paintbrush. Don't use your good paints, paintbrushes for this. There you have it, just placing a few, a few bits of flock here and there. It can be difficult placing it in the right spot, so it might take a bit of getting used to. A bit of working around to get it in the right spot. Now coming in with some pigment. Uh, this is just um, a pigment I made myself from some old chalk pastels. You can see how I made it in my old Space Marine video. Um, I'll leave a link for that so you can check it out if you want to see how I came up with that. But yeah, just just a, an old chalk pastel using some sandpaper and saving it for later on. Just brushing that in and tapping it down. Gives a nice little ground cover. Now I wanted a few sort of interesting brighter areas so I'll come in, just lay down some PVA glue, dipping it in the paintbrush in it and painting a bit of a bit of that glue on the base so that when I come back in with more of the pigment it'll stick there and have some brighter areas and give greater contrast to the green flock. Washing the brush out drying it off and coming back in to that paint, uh, the pigment mix. That PVA will dry up clear so you won't even notice that. And there you have it, pretty much the model is done.
there you have it guys that was my chaos night uh painted under order uh oh. and i hope you learned something in the process there um i had a great time doing it i've i've really enjoyed this model and um yeah i, I hope you can find some challenges on the internet to push yourself um and and level up your skills so um if you like the video please like subscribe and uh, hit the bell button so that you know when i'm posting next uh and um yeah have a great time and i'll catch you again sometime soon bye for now Thank you.